Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you three ESL activities that you can implement in your classroom for better learner engagement. So let us find out what are these activities. The first is a scavenger hunt. Now, the scavenger hunt needs to be uh, performed within a group. So therefore, divide your class into groups of five or depending upon the strength of your class, you can have uh, a group of four also. So once the groups have been divided, you need to ask the group members uh, to arrange for all these articles within a span of five minutes. Now, uh, so here we are actually developing on the skill of um, working in a group, that is accommodating oneself in a group or adjusting in a group. And secondly, we are also helping the learners uh, develop the skill of collaboration develop the skill of coordination, uh, then develop the leadership qualities, that is the ability to delegate responsibility to the group members, developing communicating skills, ability to communicate effectively with your group members, uh, develop the clarity in communication, and so on in the group members. And not only that, you're also developing the critical thinking skills of the learners in the sense, since you have to arrange for all these articles within a span of five minutes, you have to think how you can arrange it as soon as possible. So you're developing the thinking skills as well as the critical thinking skills because uh, the learners have to be encouraged to think uniquely or to think differently. They might recognize each of this object because they might have seen this object somewhere or the other uh, so it is not very difficult for them you know to uh, identify this object but the ability to arrange for this objects and put it inside the plastic bag within a span of five minutes and um, that is the task you know because that is where you know the learners have to have a different way of approaching this activity so I have experimented this activity with all grades of learners and it is extremely useful. It is extremely helpful, not only in um, developing the skills of the learners, but also in terms of engaging the learners at the same time, including all the learners in the process of learning. And as a teacher, I'm sure we would like to include all the learners in the process of learning. So having said this, I would request all of you to kindly implement this activity in your classroom and do share feedback in the comment section. So now let us move on to the second activity that is learn to write. Writing, you know, as a teacher, I find it very difficult to tell my students that uh, you need to write. And so therefore, uh, you need to write a report or you need to write a proposal and so on. Very difficult. So when we do activities like this, you know, automatically the interest is generated and the learners, uh, they learn to write and at the same time, they enjoy writing. And that should be the main purpose as a teacher. So... What I do is when I divide the learners into groups of five, I arrange for an envelope like this. And in this, inside this envelope, I include all the alphabets from A to Z. And each group is given this envelope. It, then each group is instructed to pick out any five alphabets from the envelope. And with this five alphabets, uh, they can um, they have to use this five alphabet while uh, trying to um, frame words or while trying to use words or create words. So we are developing the vocabulary skills. That is, we are helping them to develop the vocabulary. So I can give an example. So suppose I have used, you know, the alphabets A, B, F, G. So I have to, once I have, included these alphabets, I need to use these alphabets um, you know, to create words. So, so while creating the words, obviously I will require the help of other alphabets as well. So I use the other alphabets, but I make sure that the alphabets that, alphabet that I have selected, I have used it in the words that I have created. So if I have to use you know, uh, the alphabet A, it is very easy. With all kinds of words, I can use the alphabet A. For the first grade students, you know, they can use the alphabet A in using words like cat, hat, mat, and so on. As they move on higher, higher to the higher grades, they can use the alphabet A in words like learn, uh, then draw, and so on. So in this way, we can give examples to the students and they can create words. Now, in order to increase the complexity of this game, we are not going to stop at that. 
You're not going to only say that you have to create words. You're going to move a step forward. We are going to tell the learners that once you've created the words, now you are supposed to use these words in order to connect these words together. So use certain words in order to connect these words together in a meaningful unit. So you have to use extra words. You have to use connecting words in order to connect two or more words together. So once they put it in a meaningful unit, we can ask them the higher grades. We can ask them to put it in a sentence. So in a sentence, there will be a verb. So we can ask them to include a verb. And this way, they can put it in a meaningful sentence. Again, when you move on to the higher grades, we can ask them to use, you know, these sentences. So they might have created two sentences or three sentences. Ask them to link these three sentences into a meaningful unit. So when they are using these linking words, they also learn how to use the linking words or whatever they have learned in their fourth grades or fifth grade or the linking words that they have learned, they can recollect and they can reuse these linking words in this particular activity. And then we can ask them to organize their ideas systematically in a logical sequence. So you, as you can see that this activity can be used from the first grade to the postgraduate level, um, depending upon what exactly we want the learners to do. So if you want the learners uh, to develop their vocabulary, so we can you know, just uh, develop their vocabulary. If you want them to move further, okay, we can uh, include, you know, we can ask them to link the words together into a meaningful unit. And we can also develop their grammatically, this, uh, how to use the words together in a grammatically correct sentence. So we can um, help them to learn how to frame sentences or to make sentences which are grammatically correct, which are sensible, and which also are meaningful uh, when we are talking from the grammatical point of view. Also, we can develop the skill of um, you know, using the connecting words and their, of course, logical sequencing at the same time. So depending upon the level of learners, we can decide what to do with this particular activity. This activity is very useful as you are actually helping them to develop so many skills apart from the communicating skills that you develop with each group activity. And of course, apart from the skill of including everyone in the learning process, developing the leadership qualities, developing the collaborative techniques, as well as their coordination skills. So having said this, I would like to move on to the third activity. Now this third activity, I divide my learners into pairs um, because that is bit, uh, more useful and, uh, it, and moreover, it can be done in a more, uh, more efficiently. So I give uh, each pair is given a dialogue. The dialogue could be between the teacher and the student. It could be between the doctor and a patient. It could be between a customer and the salesperson. So um, when they're given the dialogue, so depending upon the grade that you are teaching the learners, you can ask them to uh, you know, go through the dialogue. So the first grade students can be asked to, uh, to go through the dialogue and understand the concept of the dialogue. What is the communication or what kind of communication is going on? And they can actually um, be asked to do a role play. So each pair is asked to do a role play. Since the dialogue is between two people, so we are dividing uh, the students in pairs and each pair will have to do a role play. While they do a role play, they are not supposed to look at the dialogue or not supposed to read from the dialogue. So when we are, uh, when we are encouraging them not to look at the dialogue, obviously they will come up with their own ideas if they forget something or if they have missed something from the dialogue that is already given to them. So we are developing again the thinking skills. We are also developing the ability to be spontaneous and to overcome um, their you know, fear and hesitation of speaking in front of the audience. We are developing the speaking skills. At the same time, we are developing the confidence to speak you know, fluently in the target language. And uh, so as we move on to the higher grades, we can definitely ask them not only to do a role play, but also uh, to change the ending of the dialogue. Uh, for the postgraduate learners, not only do they have to change the ending of the dialogue, but they have to see to it uh, that they can incorporate a humorous ending to the dialogue. So again, we are developing the creative skills. We are also developing the critical thinking skills um, so that they can 
again enjoy at the same time acquire the skills without even realizing that they have acquired a skill again we are also including everyone in the learning process and that is very important uh, when we are doing this activity mm -hmm. so having said this i would suggest that you please implement this activities in your class and do share your feedback uh, in the comment section thank you